Hello again. Welcome to the second lecture in our program on the modern novel. My name is Fuzi Slisli, and I am your instructor. So, <clears throat> today we continue our conversation about modernism and modernist principles. And uh, you remember we talked about how modernism, we gave definitions of modernism, and then we saw that modernism was a reaction against scientific rationalism of the 19th century, and that it was helped in that by the development of a number of philosophies and theories, including those of Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Charles Darwin. Well, um, we continue that conversation, and uh, that atmosphere created in the 19th century uh, a certain dissatisfaction among people about religion, organized religion. The institutionalized church religion started becoming unconvincing for people. So people started looking for alternative spiritualities and alternative religions, for truer forms of religion. And um, this is uh, what started various uh, movements of intellectual, educated people, of scholars, poets, writers, looking for or researching or exploring rituals, romance, theosophy, uh, the Golden Bough, and uh, looking at traditional forms of religion, forms of religion that exist in non-European societies, whether in Asia, in Africa, and so on. Um, and all of this led to uh, a practice in the arts especially, literature and the arts, trying to explore new forms uh, of being, trying to imagine new definitions of what it means to be human, trying to uh, find humanity's place in this world again. Um, among these movements, especially in the arts, we should mention expressionism in the art. Expressionism uh, refused direct representation of reality, as you can see from uh, the famous painting of uh, Munch, uh, Edward Munch, The Scream, it's a famous painting. There's, you know, basically a structure of a human being. We can't tell it's a man or a woman who is screaming. And the, the, the painting is just called The Scream. Um, as you can see, it does not try to represent reality realistically in a photographic way, but it tries to capture to capture what is beyond uh, what we see, tries to capture what is deep, you know. How do you capture a scream in painting? That's an amazing way. How do you capture a loud noise through color, through paintbrush? Expressionism was experimental in that sense, in trying to see if we move beyond the verbal and try to explore new forms of expression that we might find truer uh, forms of being. We might reach truer levels of existence instead of staying just at the surface that simple language allows us to, uh, keeps us uh, stuck in. So expressionism refused direct representation of reality uh, it favored expressing an inner version, an inner vision, an inner emotion, or a spiritual reality. And it relates to the idea we said earlier about how people were dissatisfied, dissatisfied, unhappy with the forms of religiosity that existed in Europe, in their societies. They wanted a truer form of religion. They wanted truer spirituality, truer emotions, and truer visions. The, the, the scream by Edward Munch evokes a whole realm of spiritual agony, because the scream, when you look at the painting, 
um, it doesn't, I mean, you, we can't tell what it is we're looking at. I mean, it looks like a bridge and a river and a sky and there is two banks of the river, but it all looks like uh, like a state of agony and torment and pain. It looks very painful, right? And so this is why the scream as a painting evokes uh, a whole realm of spiritual agony. And it's this spiritual agony, this is why the painting was so popular and so successful because people recognized in it something they all felt. And it's this state of spiritual death or spiritual agony. Um, besides expressionism, we should also mention surrealism. Uh, surrealism, as you can tell from the name, surrealism. It also rejects realism and tries uh, it, it tries to bring a fuller awareness of human experience, both conscious and unconscious. Uh, so again, surrealism rejects realistic representation uh, because surrealism thinks that it's incapable of capturing human uh, experience. So it goes beyond realism, as you can see from this painting by Goya, uh, this is a Goya painting, you can see the clock or the watch melting and you can see all sorts of um, fantastic things happening there, is it birds or trees, there is, a, there is the shape of a mountain in, over there, the time, the clock is bigger than the mountains and it's melting and you see the numbers and it evokes a, uh, it's, it's, it, it brings a fuller awareness of human experience, both conscious and unconscious. Um, when we talk about modernism, modernist, so on whether it's modernist literature or modernist art, there is a number of descriptors, there's a number of common words that are central to modernist literature, to modern novel, modernist novels and modernist art. Uh, these words, I am including them here in a list, are words like decentred. Decentred is the idea that the world or thinking or thought or culture doesn't have a center anymore. And it reflects the state of European societies as societies that lost their center and cannot replace it. Uh, pessimistic is another key descriptor because modernist novels and modernist art is very pessimistic. It's also disaffected, unhappy, you know, and it's also a literature in crisis, right? Modernist literature is a literature in crisis. It's a literature about crisis. It's a literature that tries to confront crisis and tries to find uh, order or some kind of sense within the crisis. It's also a literature about loss and repair. Modernist novels, modernist art is always about loss, losing precious things. And I'm not talking about objects. I'm talking about uh, losing the center of one's existence, losing meaning, losing sense. Uh, an inability to find one's place in society, in the world. Inability to understand human beings' place in, 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 in this uh, existence. So it's about loss and repair and, 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 and despair. Um, modernist literature is also about violence and alienation. Modernist literature tries to confront the idea that our societies, our lives, human life, human existence is full of violence and full of alienation and loneliness. It's also about race relations and modernist literature confronts the question and the problem of race and racism and race relations. Uh, modernist literature is also uh, aware of historical discontinuity, the idea that history is just a nicely continuous 
narrative of one thing leading to another, like it's nicely presented in a history book, is not, that's not how things are in reality. Uh, real history, as Karl Marx taught us, is about discontinuities historical discontinuities between the previous era and this era. There is no continuity, there is discontinuity. Uh, modernist literature is also about decadence and decay. Decay of old institutions, decay of culture, decay of principles, decay of value systems, decay of entire worlds. It's also a rejection of history because history in the end is just a narrative. It's a story, and since history is just a story, then modernist literature con tries to construct its own history, its own story as a history. And uh, lastly, uh, last but not least, it's the idea that change is unavoidable. It, it's like we learned from Karl Marx that the only thing that's constant in history is change. Nothing is constant, nothing is stable in history. The only thing that's stable and constant is change. Um, things that modernist writing does, for example, uh, modernist writing elevates art over everything else. So art, an artistic expression, and maybe because of, of, of the, the spiritual need that people felt in European societies and Western societies by the first half of the 20th century, there was such a, a huge spiritual need which made them elevate art above everything else because maybe they felt that they could find that spirituality in art, right? So art is elevated higher than morality, higher than money, higher than middle-class values. Also, modernist writing is avant-garde, which means it, it's alienated from social reality. It, it tries to confront questions and issues that society still doesn't have the courage to deal with. So it goes and confronts it directly. Modernist writing also is characterized chiefly by a rejection of 19th century traditions, um, reader conventions of realism or traditional meter. So they reject 19th century traditions, they reject the reader conventions of the 19th century, they reject the realism of the 19th century, they reject the meter in poetry of the 19th century, uh, modernism is also predominantly cosmopolitan, which means it's an, herbal, an urban city culture. It's not rural, it's not a countryside culture, it's a cosmopolitan urban city culture. Also, modernism expresses a sense of urban cultural dislocation. In, uh, in other words, it tries to confronts the loneliness that a person finds in cosmo in urban settings. We live in cities that have two and three and ten million people, but we feel extremely lonely and isolated. And modernism tries to confront this question. Uh, modernism also represents psychological time rather than real time. Psychological time is how we feel time inside ourselves, inside our consciousness and our emotions and inside the stream of our consciousness and psychological time is different from real time which we calculate in six hours, twelve hours. So modernism tries, represents psychological time and the stream of consciousness. Also, um, perhaps if there is a logo or a slogan <coughs> that represents modernism in literature, it's the idea of make it new. Make literature, make the novel, make the form that you are doing, that you are, whether it's a novel or a poem or a drama, make it new. Art for them is unique and original, and art is anti-commercial. You don't make art to sell it or to make money. Art is against the commercialization of value, especially 
uh, if this art is used as a source of spirituality, as a source of uh, understanding, then it should not be commercialized, it should not be subject to money and possessions and so on. Uh, modernism explores the human subconscious, like Freud uh, taught them, and modernism relies and employs myth as a reaction against scientific r rationalism. So while scientific rationalism was uh, stressing only facts and facts only, uh, modernism uh, employs myth, ostora, and uses sensuality, intuition, and a search for truth. For modernism, time is circular rather than linear, uh, and modernism feels that human character can only be known through memories and thoughts versus external descriptions. Human character, real human character, exists in memories and thoughts and not in external actions and descriptions. Modernism reacts against realism. We saw that with expressionism and surrealism. And modernism reacts against Victorian morality and finds sexuality and sexual desire as a subject, right? They confront like Victorian morality stays away from the subject of sexuality and sexual desire. For 19th century morality, that's a no-no. That's a subject not to be discussed. Modernism rejects this idea and confronts the subject of sexuality and sexual desire. Modernism, in general, is disenchanted, unhappy, and trying to find some sense in literature and in art. Forms of modernist writing. Well, modernist writing experiments with point of view and narrative structure. Um, they might give you a story with three narrators. Every chapter is narrated by a different character, so we understand maybe it's the same event narrated by three people and confronts us with the idea that uh, there is no such thing as a fact or as reality. Every person will describe the same event with the language at their disposal. So in the end we have three accounts that reflect three events, but what happened is only one event. Um, so the experiment with point of view and narrative structure, there is a rejection of chronological and narrative continuity, literature and language they see literature and language as a game. They believe in stream of consciousness and use it heavily. And modernism often use an unreliable narrator, which is amazing when you think about, you know, I'm going to give you a story, but I'm going to give you a narrator. You will feel he's lying to you, right? So... Uh, in a way, this is an attempt to get the reader to do some of the work. If you understand that the narrator might be lying to you and is untrustworthy and unreliable, how will you deal with the content that this narrator is telling you? You will scrutinize it harder because you think, well, this person, this character is a liar. How can I believe everything the narrator is telling me? And finally, also, modernism uses fragments and a non-linear plot. Plots are not linear. They don't go from A to B to C to D to F, but rather go from A to F and then D and then C and then plots are not linear. They use fragments. There is also a juxtaposition and multiple point of view. They could juxtapose two points of views two narrative instances just to allow us to explore how people see the same thing differently. Um, modernism rejects social realism and adopts psychological realism. It seeks to represent the character's thoughts, feelings and memories in his or her consciousness. Literature for modernism, for modernism is uh, art. It's it's an object produced. It's an art object. <clears throat>
produced by consummate craft rather than as a statement of emotions. Modernism is not a set of stylistic features, it's an impulse to perfection, to perfect. It's modernism is a refusal of cliches. They reject cliches and they reject the system of taboos in the societies in which they live. Modernism is a reaction against degraded realism, especially in the marketplace. And it's a repudiation of monopoly capitalism effect. They reject monopoly capitalism and its effects on human beings. Conformity, standardization, repetition, seriality and stupidity are all rejected by modernism. And this brings us to the end of this session. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been useful and I will see you in the next lecture when we will be discussing uh, the first novel, Animal Farm. Thank you so much and have a good day.